Hey everybody, my name is Colin Slap, watchmaker in the Netherlands and now in Greece here in Athens. Glorious Greece, it's so beautiful over here. Here the National Museum of Archaeology, the Antikythera mechanism, a real bucket list thingy because I've been studying that mechanism for years and now finally seen it in person. First, I would like to compliment uh, the different persons and teams who built the different uh, replicas. They did an amazing job. Such craftsmanship. I really uh, tip my head to them. Um, a watchmaker's view on the Antikythera mechanism. Because there are a thing or two that with a practical watchmaker view doesn't add up to this mechanism. I am not going to debate, to debate the age, the genius, <laughs> all the different functions, many um, very uh, bright minds had a view of that and I'm just not qualified to, uh, to have a view on that. But I do have some experience in cutting gears, restoring vintage watches, timepieces with complications. And that is when there is an overlap to this Antikythera mechanism. Two things. I would like to share my views, just my views uh, on the mechanism and construction. And I would like to share a few of my views on the place in history. For the construction, it can never have been a practical functioning mechanism. It is a proof of concept. It is a hugely overcomplicated but still genius uh, piece of mechanism. And um, the thing is, with the, I have to really <laughs> uh, think about the words I'm going to use. With the construction of this mechanism, um, when you have a timepiece and a complication, a complication is a function on top of a normal timepiece. So, a chronograph is a complication, or date, or day, or um, moon phase, stuff like that. An extra function on top of a mechanism. Here there are so many different complications, about 30, at least 30 gears. And the thing is, with when you are working on watches and watches with complications, it is so difficult to see the functioning of the different complications if the gears are permanently engaged. There is no modular way of building this Antikythera mechanism, so all teeth are always engaged. The teeth are just about a millimeter high. And if you work on watches or cut gears, cutting or hobbing gears. Making the teeth is doable. Even then, even in bronze, and even with an abrasive stone or stuff like that. The most difficult part is to keep the center of the wheel right in the middle. If a wheel moves like this, on one side it engages too much, so the mechanism will seize, and on the other side, if the wheel isn't centered, it will disengage and then the teeth will slip. And here in the Antikythera mechanism, the readout will be wrong. Even if one teeth is slightly bent, the whole mechanism will cease because all the teeth are permanently engaged. And the circular motion of the gears that is just insane, insane craftsmanship. And you will spend 
the rest of your life finding a defect because even if one teeth is a bit crooked everything will cease how will you find where the problem lies it's not modular so you cannot take one piece off and test the rest okay it's uh, if it's okay then the problem will in that uh, module not like this and the use of the material bronze bronze isn't that suitable for making these gears uh, it will corrode it will seize up especially 2000 years ago no central heating obviously salty air here in the mediterranean um, it will corrode within years and with this construction the lubrication is so hard to do you have to take it out completely put it back together again and then calibrate all the different readouts because it got different faces for uh, information that's just not doable so it is a demonstration model and what I find strange that is just a construction it will seize up it will it is not functional for a practical use a daily use and then it's the material being used bronze there are no bronze gears not even close to this period so in some book in a few books it says all the gears will uh, were uh, smelted reused uh, but even in this museum here there are so many objects bronze objects of cauldrons or cooking vessels or huge statues even before the antikythera mechanism the recycle theory that there are no gears left because they needed the material i don't buy that again i'm not debating the age i'm not debating <laughs> debating the genius but the recycling of the gears no no way some of the functions of this mechanism are very useful so solar eclipse lunar eclipse uh, when the next olympic games are all in this one machine if you made a simplified version with just a few gears then it would be functional useful and more of them would have survived the ages so this is so over complicated with so much information a simplified version would be really useful in daily life navigation uh, uh, at sea stuff like that so the use of bronze isn't practical for daily use so over complicated is not for any use <laughs> and that there are no gears uh, ever found that is just got nothing to do with recycling for the rest i don't give any it's just an opinion uh, but i don't judge and then the place in history a 2000 year old computer that is so insane it is just like uh, well i've got a hammer i got a chisel and i see some stone <laughs> let's go to mount rushmore or if i place one stone on top of each other hmm, that might work egypt do you need a pyramid <laughs> or the wright brothers hmm, the flying machine might work call the armstrongs Neil, got any plans for the weekend? <laughs> Poker with Aldrin? Nah, bring bus! It's just a small step for mankind. From zero to absolute genius, there must be a progression 
in steps, in technical steps to reach this insane height of genius. If there were gears, they would have been used for many other things that were practical and survived. And that is such an anomaly. And I am I'm fully aware that absence of evidence is no evidence of absence. Uh, that's much I know about archaeology. Um, for example, um, that it hasn't been found yet doesn't mean it never existed. Basic rule of archaeology. But they were able to make such high level gears in such a well thought through genius design. There were no gears used in simplified designs for practical use. And that is what's fascinating about history, about mechanical <laughs> stuff and technical uh, innovation and uh, evolution in general. Just a few thoughts on the Antikythera mechanism in beautiful, glorious Greece. It is absolutely uh, worthwhile to see it real life. Just like Mona Lisa. When you stand there, something happens. Same here. You can see all the videos, read all the books. I did. And now here in person, it's magical. It is really magical. Hope you enjoyed just a few views of a watchmaker on this world wonder uh, of the <laughs> mechanical world. Hope to see you soon. See ya. Bye bye.